a today I'm just gonna go over some of the philosophy maybe mental gymnastics rationale behind using something like NeoVim or Emacs um, so just to jump in I'd say that the main force that kind of pushed me into these PDEs or per personal development environments is uh, just free time from COVID being stuck at home nothing better to do open source software is free doesn't cost 10 bucks a month like Netflix and you can just kind of dive in get started and feel like you're doing something productive and I'd say that's the uh, the main difference is just this sense of struggle like the uh, myth of Sisyphus you know you're rolling this rock up a hill it's gonna roll back down and you got something to do again you know so just this sense of purpose that you get <laughs> from these uh, text editors is nice you know you're always working on configs here I've got a uh, this little plugin that I made that you know nobody probably uses but just testing out the API testing out these little functions in NeoVim it's been a lot of fun you know just going to a cafe you have something to do uh, and trying to kind of make something and then the other thing that I really like is you know I think maybe two or three people max are using this plugin but still you know it's a nice feeling you feel like you're contributing something you know, you're kind of screaming into the void and you're getting a little echo back which is nice uh, but I'd say that the number one complaint I get that my friends will make fun of me about is you know, you're wasting so much time you're wasting time doing this and while I do think that would be true if I had other stuff to do you know life is so long the day is so long and I don't watch Netflix I don't play video games I don't read nearly as much as I should so you know I'm not necessarily wasting time, I'm just using time that would otherwise be wasted in something at least somewhat tangential to uh, my career, my job, my interest, which is programming. And although I think it would be more productive to do something like, uh, you know, program 24-7, just work on algorithms, uh, it's not that sustainable, you burn out, this is something a bit more fun, you know, you can switch your mindset, switch your focus, and one of the reasons why I chose this over uh, Emacs, NeoVim over Emacs for programming, is it's just lighter. The API is a bit more concise, a bit clearer. It's faster. And uh, I just like that it's in the terminal. I like that it's so quick and easy to start up. If you're using virtual environments, it's a lot easier to get those working. But with Emacs, I think the note-taking ability of org mode is just you know, second to none. And the, uh, the other thing I'll say about these guys versus VS Code is the, uh, how long everything lasts, you know. I'd say some Vim configs probably still work after 20 years. Some Emacs configs, maybe they work after 40 years. And although things are changing a bit more with NeoVim, I think it is the, uh, this kind of zeitgeist Vim. You know, it's VI Vim, NeoVim. Hopefully it sticks around for a lot longer than the other two because it's community backed right now. And I'd say one of the, the biggest things about NeoVim is getting into the plugin ecosystem is so much easier writing plugins. You don't have to go through Melpa. Someone doesn't have to download stuff from your um, Git repo, just downloading Lisp files and then putting them in their config and loading them. You can use Packer and you can just uh, load stuff super easily. So just to give a quick demo of that, if I go here, to my plugins, you can see that um, when I'm testing my plugin, when I'm using it locally, I can just source it from here and then here. If I'm sourcing plugins, this is just some repo name and then the plugin name. So this guy, Preserve Vim, made Nerd Commenter, I can just use it like that. I don't have to go through some repository. There's no check process, which you know is good and bad at the same time, but you'll see stuff if you're going on Reddit and looking at the the subreddit for NeoVim, people posting their plugins, you can watch videos on them, look at articles. So I'd say overall the plugin support for NeoVim is much better, which is one of the reasons why I'd say it's flourishing so much now. And one of the things I've tried to do is I've tried to make it look as much like Emacs as possible, because I love so many things about Emacs. I love the Ivy look to it. I love how you can select buffers, uh, buffer management, like here if I do this. Uh, if I have a bunch of buffers open, I can see how they operate, how they work. So I've got pretty much everything I like out of Emacs, and I've put it in NeoVim, and now I just have to uh, 
or I don't have to, but I'm just trying to write as many plugins as I can to kind of get a better feel for it. Like here I have this cheat sheet plugin I wrote, just lets me uh, query that website, cheat.sh, find some stuff. I have commands where I can you know, compile stuff. Here, let me see, present work directory is. Just all these, these little plugins, these little features that you can add where you're, uh, you're able to do certain stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And I think that's what makes uh, like these things so much fun. You, know? you can do these somewhat programming related things. At the same time, you're kind of shaving off some friction in your workflow. And one thing I, I recommend to do is just do a couple Lua problems. Code Wars is really nice, open source. And your ability to work with strings and stuff like that will improve. It's not required, but I found that it was a good precursor to doing some plugin development. Not that I'm a good Lua programmer or a good plugin developer, but I'd be much, much worse if I hadn't done a couple of those. And uh, I think the last thing I'll, I'll talk about is just that when you're using these PDEs, when you're using these these plugins, it's almost like a, a, a stoic <laughs> a stoic's text editor in the sense that you're using something that you enjoy, you're doing something um, that may not seem that productive, but you're just kind of choosing what does or doesn't have value to you. You're trying to control your environment. Like the whole thing of stoicism is like you can't control your environment, you can only control how you react to it. So I'd say that your kind of code environment is a extension of your internal environment, the only thing that you can really control. So being able to control that, have some management over that while you know trends come and go, the new text editor comes and goes, um, like Adam fell, I'd say Eclipse is used less. VS Code is the main one right now, which at work I use for the, uh, the proprietary language that I have to use. Um, but you have this thing that you can kind of keep with yourself and you know always work on, hack on. You just have this community. And then the, the other philosophy I'd say that kind of goes along with that is you know existentialism and absurdism. You know, like it's absurd. Why are you spending time doing this? Or why are you spending time you know doing pretty much anything, especially with programming? You're just mashing keys on a keyboard. Does it really matter what editor is uh, tracking those keys, putting them down in pixel form? But you know, if it's something you enjoy, if it's something that you can struggle against, you know, flex your mind against, might as well keep doing it. And I think those are the main reasons I've gotten into this. Maybe it's the uh, the mental gymnastics of wasting hundreds of hours doing this, but there's not really anything else that I, you know, necessarily would be doing um, with my time other than maybe you know playing guitar. I try to be somewhat of a, I guess, amateur athlete. I wrestled in college, do jiu-jitsu tournaments, go train a couple hours a day if I can. But it's just one of those things where you give yourself a little kernel of purpose in these different areas, you know. So maybe you're having a bad day, you got beat up at practice, someone choked you out, armbarred you, popped your elbow, just do some work on your plugin. You know, have this little ecosystem you can control and in that sense, I'd say it's very meditative. But, uh, you know, everybody deals with things differently. If you can find a hobby that you like, that you can progress at, you know, dive into that. If programming's not your thing, you know, I'd say probably don't do it. But uh, my goal is I switched to programming my sophomore year of uni, and I just wanted to kind of engulf myself in it, you know, become kind of engender who I wanted to be, just craft this person that was good at all forms of programming. So maybe I'm just gaslighting myself into thinking that this is important, but it's evolved into something that I really like, I really enjoy. Like when I start programming, I just, uh, I enjoy it. It's something that I look forward to. I like all the new little languages. Um, like right now, I really like SIG, even though it's probably not the most useful, but it's just so concise. The tooling is nice. I just find it uh, very, like, very aesthetic. Maybe that's the wrong reason to choose a language, but all these uh, these little plugins you can make, you can make your life easier with them. You know, it's just uh, 
it's something to try at least, you know. I'd say it's definitely not a waste of time unless you don't plan on programming. <laughs>